Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. One man is dead and multiple people shot in Freeport. Plus, we take you to one of the biggest festivals in Rockford as the community comes together this Labor Day weekend. And more details come out about the death of music icon Jimmy Buffett and the years of health struggles that he had been performing through. Good evening, I'm Marissa Lesnar. Taylor is off tonight. Thanks for joining us. One person is dead and three others hurt after a mass shooting in Freeport over the weekend. Police were called to East Pleasant Street, not far from Third Ward Park, just after midnight for a report of a shooting. That's where they found four men with gunshot wounds. Two 19-year-olds and a 23-year-old are expected to be okay. A 22-year-old Freeport man was taken to the hospital where he later died. Right now, police are asking if anyone has information about the shooting to call police or text a tip to tip 411. A wrong way driver gets his fifth OWI in Janesville. Mark Harold Clark was pulled over around midnight by Wisconsin State Patrol at Red Oak Drive. The trooper said the 64-year-old man was driving southbound in the northbound lanes and was showing signs of impairment. A late night fire causes thousands of dollars in damages to a Belvedere home. Just before 10 last night, firefighters found heavy smoke coming from the kitchen of the two-story house on West Perry Street. Before they got on the scene, the homeowners had already gotten out. Belvedere police helped put out the grease fire. The cause appears to be accidental, but the family had to find somewhere else to stay last night. One of the largest community gatherings in Rockford is taking place with the third annual Park Fest. The festival is for all families in Rockford with bouncy houses, a car show, a basketball tournament, and so much more. The Park Church is the nonprofit that organized it, all hoping to spread hope and strengthen the community. So we're here to have fun, to have a good time, to welcome the kids back to school, you know, to end out the summer, to celebrate Labor Day. But the most important part and the most fun part and rewarding is being able to witness to everyone and tell them about God and tell them how much Jesus loves them. Organizers say this is the largest festival on the city's west side. A Freeport Park is transformed into an art showcase. Around 40 Stateline artists came together to show off their work at this year's Art in the Park. The event included vendors and food trucks and makes for an eventful day at Crepe Park. All different types of artists come out, ranging from painters and jewelers and more. The hope is each year they're able to get new artists as well as keep the ones they had each year. It's it's wonderful. It's very well advertised and this park is one of Freeport's best assets and it's just, it, there's no better place to have this and there's always a big crowd. This is the 16th year for Art in the Park. Rockford is celebrating Labor Day tomorrow with a parade through the streets of downtown. That parade kicks off at 10 o'clock, but starting at 9, some streets will be closed. The route begins at 7th Street and 6th Avenue, then goes north to East State. Then it goes west across the bridge to Wyman and Chestnut, ending near the entrance to Davis Park. Drivers are urged to avoid that area. Also tomorrow, some young athletes will take to the court. Hoop Stars 3-on-3 Basketball Labor Day Tournament is back at the UW Sports Factory in downtown Rockford. State Senator Steve Stottleman created the tournament back in 2013. It's open to young athletes from 3rd through 8th grade. The event is free. Online registration is open through game day. We have a link at mystateline.com. We're learning more about the death of beloved singer Jimmy Buffett. His official website says he had been fighting skin cancer for four years. He performed throughout his treatment. His last show was in Rhode Island in July. The Margaritaville singer died on Friday night surrounded by family. He was 76 years old. Welcome back. Torrential rains left tens of thousands of people stranded in a remote stretch of desert at the Burning Man Festival in Nevada. The flooding and mud making it nearly impossible for them to leave. One person died. Alexis Christophorus has the details. Many hours of rain. Attendees at the Burning Man Festival in northwestern Nevada have been told to shelter in place indefinitely, people being advised to conserve food, water, and fuel. 
They shut the water down. I'm walking around helping pull power cables out of the ground. More than 60,000 people travel to the Black Rock Desert every year for the Counterculture Arts Festival, gathering in what's known as Black Rock City to make art, dance, and enjoy community. But torrential rains have turned the area into a muddy mess, stranding tens of thousands of revelers. Images posted on social media show people struggling to walk through the mud. There are plenty of good people that are going to make this uh, work out for everyone. More than a half inch of rain is estimated to have fallen on the festival with more rain in the forecast for Sunday. Roads now impassable. Authorities shut down the entrance to the campgrounds for the remainder of the event, which ends Monday. We might not be leaving here until Thursday because it takes usually a two, uh, two full days for the playa to dry off. Though some are doing what they can to try and get out. Music star Diplo posted this video to his social media accounts saying he and comedian Chris Rock walked five miles in the mud before being picked up by a fan. In a statement, organizers of the event say they have confidence in communal effort and civic responsibility, writing, Burning Man Project has been facilitating Black Rock City and Burning Man for over 30 years. We have done tabletop drills for events like this, adding we are looking ahead to our exodus as our next priority. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. Now, your first worn weather forecast from meteorologist Jordan Wolf. Our weather has been trending in the upward direction, at least as far as our temperatures are concerned over the last few days. We were in the low 70s as late as Wednesday, Thursday, the upper 70s, Friday into the low 80s, and then into the upper 80s and now low 90s for the rest of the weekend. And those temperatures going to hover into the 90s for at least the next couple of days going forward. Right now, many of those spots are in the low 90s, 91 in Rockford, 87 to Calb, 88 in Rochelle, 93 in Janesville, 91 in Monroe. But those dew points are remaining a little bit on the lower side, which therefore is not allowing our heat index value to be too much higher than the actual temperature. As a matter of fact, some of our heat index values are actually just below the actual air temperature, including in Rockford, where it only feels like 90 degrees despite the temperature being 91. It only feels like 92 in Janesville despite the temperature being 93 degrees. We are also seeing some of those lower dew points in many other areas across the state line, including on the southwest side of Rockford, where Jim is located, reporting a temperature of 92 degrees and a dew point of 59, which is helping to keep those temperatures feeling not quite as warm as they would otherwise when you have higher dew points in store. However, some of that warmer weather set to remain through the area for most of the weekend. We're not going to quite reach the upper 90s like some spots are seeing across the plains, but the reason that they are so warm is because they have significantly lower dew points. Many of those dew points across the plains sitting in the 40s and in the 50s, and as a result, those temperatures are therefore a little bit on the warmer side. So those lower dew points leading actually to higher temperatures because drier air is easier to heat up and cool down than more moist areas, which is what we are currently locating, what we are seeing. But those dew points that are in the 70s are going to start inching their way a little bit closer into the next couple of days. Not anything at the moment, still fairly clear and calm with our sky conditions, but winds a little bit on the breezier side as they have been showing up on our SkyTrack camera overlooking Beloit, Wisconsin. We are going to see that increase in that moisture. And as I showed just a moment ago, many of those dew points in the 70s off to the south, and that's where we see some of that cloud cover start starting to inch its way a little bit closer to the area. That's going to continue as we get into the day tomorrow. Tomorrow is Labor Day, and historically speaking, our Labor Days have been a little bit on the warmer side, especially as of late in the last decade or so. On average, we only see high temperatures around 80 degrees, and most of our high temperatures for the last decade have been in the 80s in many spots. However, we have not reached the 90s in about a, in just over a decade. 2012 was actually the last time that we had a Labor Day that was above 90 when we tied our high temperature record for Labor Day, reaching 96 degrees in Rockford. We are not going to quite breach that record, but we are going to get a little bit close to it in many spots as high temperatures return back into the mid 90s, or at least in some spots feeling like the upper 90s as well. Heat index values peaking close to the triple digits for the afternoon, so any outdoor plans that you may have Make sure you are taking those heat safety precautions, and that includes making sure you are staying very hydrated. We are going to see that increase in cloud cover, as I mentioned. That's going to be followed by some additional rain chances as a cold front sweeps through. Those rain chances, not very widespread, but mainly going to be coming in 
as we get into Tuesday night and going into the day on Wednesday. So there are those chances for rain. And once that cold front slides through, things are going to be much more comfortable in the next couple of days following from the 90s to the mid 80s and then into the upper 70s, pretty close to normal for this time of year as we trend into the back half of next week. In the meantime, though, still a little bit on the warmer side, temperatures into the low 90s. That chance for rain late Tuesday going into Wednesday. Isolated chances for a few of those thunderstorms, but then Marissa, cool and comfortable as we get into the back half of the week. Now sports with Reagan Holgate. Pitching and defense have not been the problem for the Cubs the last few days. It's the offense that's been struggling to score runs like they are used to doing. But we saw a resurgence in today's series finale with the Reds. We're going to start in the sixth inning. Cubs trail by one. But then, of course, who other than Cody Bellinger? He cannot be stopped. He fires off a solo home run to tie things up. The back and forth continues. Now tied at five in the eighth. Bases loaded for Nick Madrigal. He singles in two runners. Saya Suzuki and Dansby Swanson score. It's seven to five. Cubs. Bases loaded again. Two batters later, it's Mike Tockman who comes through with a two-run single. And this offense is just cooking with gas, folks. We're going to stay in the eighth inning here. After a belly sack fly, Swanson gives it a go for a two-run double. That caps off a seven-run inning. The Cubs would add three more in the ninth. What a day for the boys in blue. Cubs win 15-7 to to split the series. They are back to Wrigley tomorrow to start a three-game set with the Giants. Now let's go to Milwaukee. The Brewers trying to finish a sweep of the Phillies today. We'll start in the first with William Contreras. He belts this one to center field and back to the track it goes. His 15th home run of the season, 1-0 Brewers. Now to the third inning, Mark Canna at bat. He rips this one. He's got Nick Castellanos backpedaling, and it's over the wall. Another one out of the park, and the Brew Crew leads 2-0. But the Phillies would rally in the seventh. JT Romuto crushes this Wade Miley pitch, and it's gone, way gone. Philly adds three in the seventh, and that's a come-from-behind win. Brewers lose 4-2. So here's a look at the division standings after those two games today. The Cubs made some headway, but they are still three and a half games back from the Brewers. The race falls off after that. The Reds are in third, six and a half games back, and that rounds out with the Pirates and then the last place Cardinals. The Cubs are still fighting for that divisional title, obviously. So here's a look at where things stand with the three NL wildcard spots. The Phillies are holding it down at number one, five games ahead. The Cubs are comfortable in second, two and a half games ahead. But then the third spot is up for grabs. There's a two-way tie between the Giants and Diamondbacks. And then the Marlins are trying to move themselves into the conversation just a half game back there. Now, it's really not a fun time to be a White Sox fan, unfortunately, and that disappointment continued today at the rate as they finish things off with the Tigers. First inning, Sox up a run. Elvis Andrews drops one into center field here. That'll be a base hit. One runner scores, and that makes it 2-0 to zero South Siders. But we all know that one wouldn't last long. Now to the second inning, Carson Kelly with a liner here off Michael Kopech. That's a fair ball, and it ends in a two-run double. Now this one is all tied at two. Then to the seventh inning comes Spencer Torkelson. Another bummer for the Sox because those fans out there just got a new souvenir. A solo shot to put the Tigers ahead by one. Bring out the brooms because Detroit hangs on to sweep the White Sox three to two. Now, after a tumultuous summer, the Northwestern football team finally opened their season today with David Braun as the interim head coach. But not a great start, though. They lost to Rutgers 24-7. Well, check this out. Puddles the Duck, the mascot for Oregon, took on quite the challenge this weekend. The tradition is Puddles does a push-up for every point the team scores. Well, the team scored 81 points. So through some complicated math done by Puddles involving two-point conversions, field goals, and throughout the game, Puddles ended up doing, guess how many push-ups? 546 push-ups. He looks a little defeated there and just ends up falling to the ground. I don't blame him. That's that's a lot of push-ups. <laughs> I almost <laughs> thought for a second that like they'd done six push-ups per point scored or something like that. But yeah, I don't know how. how I mean, you... even if he did a push-up for every yeah every, every point, he'd still do eighty-one push-ups, which is a lot. Which is a lot. But how do you? Uh, those, okay, those are not real push-ups. 
Maybe that's why they maybe that's why I did 500. <laughs> they had to do a, enough push-ups to count one per actual yeah. real push-up. The ones that actually count. Yeah, all I don't want to see a real push-up. All there. the way back up. Yeah, I know. So maybe not quite the number. Maybe those equal out to around 81 real push-ups, I yeah, suppose. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, turning to weather now, we have had really a great Labor Day forecast. Yeah, we really have. And the weekend just continues to be a little bit on the warmer side. And we are going to continue to feature that warmer weather through the holiday as we get into Monday. Clear skies the rest of the evening tonight. Increasing humidity, though, for the moment does bring our temperatures up into the 60s for the overnight low tonight. 90s for the next few days and lots of heat and humidity, but much cooler for the back half of the week. All right, well, that's going to do it for us. Have a great night.